Now let's install Red Hat Enterprise Linux on another Dell system. This box will allow us to boot from the CD-ROM and connect to the network and install across the wire. The default is to install or upgrade the system. The system currently has a different operating system on it, so we'll override it. But we like to pass in options as we've done already, including the location of a repository, in this case Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6, located on our Debian Apache server, as well as restrictions on resolution to 800 by 600 so that it fits within our display, and optionally IP addresses and related information such as NetMask, Gateway, DNS, etc. Now we'll select the basic video driver option because otherwise the default for this system is to propel into 1280 by 1024 resolution which is a bit large for our intents and purposes. So let's go ahead and tab to modify the basic video driver. This will use the VESA driver which is an option that you can pass into the kernel to restrict the resolution. So we'll tack on our options which include location of the repository on the Apache server at 101 in the Linux CBT subdirectory EL6 miscellaneous rel6 this is the directory that we recently set up as the installation source tree let's set the resolution to 800 by 600 this will work for this system as opposed to the other system where the memory limitation prevented the graphical installation from proceeding. This system has two gigs of memory, four times the memory, and as a consequence the graphical installer will work. So let's go ahead and set the IP address equal to one up from the server to 21. The same net mask, 24 bits, and the gateway is also the same. Dot one. And the DNS will also be the Debian box 168.75.101. So these are the directives that we'll move forward with. We may optionally specify VNC here, which will start the listener as we've recently explored. But since we're going through a normal graphical installer, which is being performed locally, presuming you have access to the console, of the system to perform this type of installation. So the presumption here is you're at the console, you have physical access, and you're passing in, passing in a few parameters controlling the, rep the repository as well as the resolution with which the installation is to be performed and the IP address and to do it with the basic VESA driver. So let's move forward. This flips the resolution. And this initial section is always in text, which allows us to determine whether or not we'd like to check the media. So let's skip it. And the Ethernet interface has been configured. And whenever you see retrieving installed on image in the case of a network based installation, you know that your client has access to the installation source tree on the server. So with that said, let's proceed with the installation as usual. This is graphical install mode. Select the desired language and keyboard. As mentioned, there are various storage options. We can use specialized storage, such as FCO, for example, which is fiber channel over Ethernet, or otherwise. But we're using local storage, so we'll stick to the local hard drive as a reference. If you're using iSCSI or FCO or otherwise, that may be an option for you. Let's label this host Linux CBT serve to dot Linux CBT dot internal as it's second and top level domains. The offset's correct and the system clock does use UTC although we did not spend time looking at the BIOS. Let's indicate the password. And if you're using LDAP you can configure connectivity once the system is up and running. 
However, even when using LDAP, there is always a locally defined root user. So the options here include whether or not to replace the existing system, or to use all of the space, or re replace the existing Linux system, that is, or use all space, shrink the current system for resizing, use free space, create a custom layout. Because the system has greater than 50 gigabytes, the proposal that Anaconda automatically configures will be the default. So let's go ahead and use all space. We can also encrypt the file system. And here's an option to review and modify the partition proposal that will be presented momentarily. Let's move forward. So here's the proposal. So it seems as if the proposal is to create a volume group named VG underscore hostname, short hostname, which is a template that's used for generating the name of the volume group. Again, it's a VG underscore prefix followed by the short hostname. In addition, there are volumes for root, home, and swap. As we've mentioned, that's a default behavior. Also, there's a proposal to place outside of the logical volume management scope a boot partition that's 500 megabytes, which facilitates ample upgradability. And then we see a physical volume defined on SDA2, which is lumped into the overall logical volume management. So if we look at the full storage, it seems as if logical volume management uses of the 80 gig hard drive SDA, and we can see the full size of the drive, and we see it uses about 75 gigs. We look at the layout, we see that the bulk of it is for volume group LV underscore root. The remaining space, or the bulk of the remaining space, is for the home partition, and the remaining space is for the boot partition, as well as for swap. So swaps lumped into the volume group as well. VG underscore Linux CBT serve too. So looking at it from a hard drive perspective, SDA is the lone drive on the system. And this version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux no longer references drives, in particular Tappy drives, using H prefixes, but rather simply S prefixes. So SDA, SDB, SDC. And more specifically, there is a trend towards referencing the location on the PCI bus for further accuracy in the event that the simple labels SDA, SDB, SDC, and HDA, HDB, HDC, which have been deprecated, become rearranged during startup because the assignment of those simple names take place during startup depending upon how the kernel detects the hardware connected to the bus at that particular time. So there is room for confusion, whereas the actual physical location on the bus will not be confused, unless, of course, you plug physically the device into a different port, switching it, let's say, from PCI port 0 to PCI port 1, or vice versa. So with that said, this is the proposal of how to cut up dev SDA to use the bulk of it as a volume group and a small piece of it as a boot partition outside of the logical volume management scope. So the swap partition is within the logical volume management scope. Also note that the swap partition here is considerably larger than the swap partition on the server, Linux CBT Serve 1, which contains 512 megs of memory. In this case, because the system contains 2 gigs of memory, the swap partition is double it or 4 gigs of memory. So note that depending on the number of gigabytes or megabytes available for memory, you will determine how much bigger the swap space that's allocated, but usually the rule is double. So this is the layout. You can make changes or accept the proposal. Now, the disk is going to be encrypted, which means the contents cannot be read without the encryption password. This is a password that you do not want to lose, otherwise you will be unable to recover data from your drive. But of course, the purpose of encrypting it is simply that, or exactly that. So. The partitioning options you've selected will now be written. This is a stage where changes are actually committed to the disk. As we've mentioned, data aren't always or usually lost as a consequence of formatting or partitioning. Data may be recovered using the appropriate tools, providing you have not overwritten the data with new data. 
So all is not lost immediately, but eventually older files will be replaced by newer files. So let's write the changes to the disk. This will set up the new proposal. Again, the tendency or trend is towards using logical volume management for laying out disks within the Red Hat Enterprise environment, as well as other distros as well, because LVM allows us much more flexibility with respect to how we allocate storage. So the logical volume